In this video, you'll get a general overview of Cabinet Solutions custom cabinet design software. Some of the features of Cabinet Solutions include the ability to design in face frame or frameless construction. In addition to the uh, standard cabinets, cabinet types which we include in the program, you can design your own custom cabinets using your own custom construction methods and joinery. Some of the reports that come out of the program include assembly sheets, dimension floor plans and elevations, and cutlass and doorless. You also get 3D renderings to help sell the job. Uh, there's a, The job costing part of the program allows you to input your material and hardware costs so that you can make accurate bids. There's also a panel optimizer to help you get the best yield out of your sheet goods. In this video, we're going to design this kitchen using custom cabinets from start to finish. When you launch the program, this is the main window. I'm going to go into the job standards. In the job standards, you tell the program whether you want to work in face frame or European, frameless. Uh, some of the other things you'd set up would be uh, like here in construction methods. With the face frame construction, whether I want a butt joint or mortise and tenon. For the cabinet box construction, whether I want a dado, uh, uh, the top, tops or bottoms into the sides and how deep. Uh, when, you, when you check or uncheck an option in the, st in the standards, a lot of the times you'll get a di an illustration such as this that shows you exactly what it is that you're changing. Um, if I go to material thickness, that's where I would uh, define the thickness of the different parts of the cabinet. Uh, right now I'm in inch, but it's very easy to change the program to work in metric as well. I'm just going to apply to job. Uh, if I want to change my units, I just go to options, units, and uh, pick a different unit to work in. Uh, there's inches with fractions, with decimal, or my metric units towards the bottom. I'm going to go to my draw walls view. To draw a wall, you just pick a point on the screen and hold, while holding the left mouse button, you drag in the direction you want to go. When you release the mouse button, a dialog box pops up and you can key in a specific length. And I'll hit enter. To draw a connecting wall, you just cl get close to the first wall and do the same thing you did. Click pick a direction and when you release key in a length and hit enter. Now I'm going to add a window to the north wall so I'm going to click edit wall, click the wall and you'll notice I've got a square on the left end of the wall and a star on the right. I'm going to click place window and check center align so that I'm measuring from the center of the window. It's got a height of 42 width of 36 distance from f the floor and the bottom of the window 42 I'm just gonna go with those default numbers there and uh, even though I could change them and from this I want the distance from the center of the window to the square to be 72 and accept accept and I'll go back to my snap to angle and now I'll start placing cabinets uh, start with corner cabinets, angled corner cabinets. Base, I've got a default height width and depth with I, which I can change or just go with. Um, I'm just going to go with them, with the default numbers. I'm slightly overlapping the left wall and when I click it snaps into place. I'm going to place my upper and do the same thing. Next I'm going to place a refrigerator upper cabinet. I'm going to make it oversized intentionally and because I have smart placer turned on it'll shrink to fit when I click and place it. I set up in my standards to allow four inches of clearance at the end of the wall and three inches between the a window and a cabinet. So the program automatically allowed for that. Now I want to customize this refrigerator upper so I'm going to click it go to elevations 
and when you click a cabinet from the elevations it takes you to where you can customize that cabinet. In this case I want to send the ends to the floor so I'm going to click on ends and for the left and right end I'm going to click on set st send style and end to floor and accept. We'll go back to place cabinets. Now I'm going to place a refrigerator in there so I'm going to go to my appliances uh, refrigerator double door continue and like the cabinets I can make the appliances whatever size I need them to be so I'm going to make this uh, 46 inches place it now if I hold my cursor over the refrigerator I can see that it's 32 inches deep I'm going to change the refrigerator upper to be the same so I'm going to click it edit change the depth to 32 and put it back now I'm going to place a base cabinet between the refrigerator upper and the corner cabinet. Intentionally oversized so it uh, shrinks to fit. And I'm going to click it to customize it. There we go. And I'm going to go to add a center style. I'm going to click center style. And uh, it asks me whether I want to place a partition behind the center style or not. Uh, we'll say yes. When I hit continue it's going to ask me do I want to set up the pro properties for the partition? Um, I'm going to skip that. Each time I click on the opening, uh, click on an opening, it's going to add a center style. I just want to do it one time. There we go. Now I'm going to click on openings and rollouts. Opening 4. Edit. Selected opening. And I want to make it 39 and a quarter in width. Now for opening, I'm going to click on opening 3, edit, and change it to a sync top, set. and opening 2, edit, change it to a drawer, accept. And now I have one big drawer there on the what I want to be a drawer bank, so I'm going to fix that. I'm going to, going to go to center rail. I can go with the default center rail size or change it. Default's fine. Continue. Each time I click on opening 2, it's going to add a center rail. There we go. And now I'm done with this cabinet. Okay. That's what we have in 3D so far. Um, <clears throat> okay, now we'll finish laying out the rest of the kitchen. I'm going to just go with the base cabinet to the left of the corner cabinet there and then a slide in range and then a large base cabinet to fill in the rest of the space and then a range hood above the range it'll automatically center when I click anywhere near the range cabinet and uh, I'm going to place a large upper cabinet to the left of the range hood and I'm going to copy this large upper cabinet, smart copy, place it to the right of the hood cabinet. And I'm going to copy the new upper cabinet, smart copy, and place it to the right of the corner cabinet. And I'm going to go to appliances again and select a range hood microwave combo for under the hood cabinet. Now let's look at our 3D again. Okay, so this is the basic 3D, and uh, let's take a look again at the enhanced 3D. Here's my uh, enhanced 3D rendering. To generate an enhanced 3D rendering, you go to Enhanced 3D, and you would set up the image, camera, and color options how you want, and then you render the enhanced 3D, and it'll render an image like the one I just showed you. Uh, now let's look at our cut list. I'm going to print master cut list and uh, you can print out an individual section of the cut list or you can select all. If, uh, if you want per certain cabinets in the cut list and not others you would go to select cabs otherwise it includes them all. Let's look at uh, the entire cut list with all the cabinets and go to print preview. 
uh, parts are separated by type and material and it goes from widest to narrowest and you've got the uh, quantity, width, length, name and the cabinet that it belongs to along, along with the small number that it gives you a quantity for that particular cabinet like we see here cabinet 4 is getting three center rails and let's just take a scroll down and take a look still in box parts uh, this here is overall door sizes which is handy if you're ordering your doors and drawer fronts is next drawer boxes after that and then individual parts of the doors for uh, if you're making uh, if you're actually making your doors you get like a five piece door you get all the uh, the sizes of each individual part okay there's a sample cut list you can download on the website on the cabinet solutions overview page if you want to review it uh, let's look at the assembly sheets so I'll go to my elevation we'll use this cabinet then I'll go to assembly sheet the assembly sheet gives me a gives me this type of drawing and uh, then I get a description of each opening in the drawing uh, in this case A through F and then the opening sizes in the description uh, for the shelf openings it'll tell you exactly where the shelf goes how far up from the bottom and the dado location if it's a, a fixed shelf being dadoed into the sides of the cabinet sides or partition uh, next I have my door and drawer front sizes for this cabinet on the assembly sheet then I have my face frame parts if it's a face frame cabinet then my box parts and any custom notes you add would be on the bottom of this assembly sheet which is something you have the ability to do as well if you build a custom cabinet you can save it to your library by clicking on save to library naming it and saving it next thing we'll take a look at is the panel optimizer we'll do a three quarter inch melamine so it tells me here I'm on page one of five the number of pages tells me I'm going to need how many sheets of material I'm going to need for in this case my three quarter inch melamine I'm going to need five sheets I've got uh, descriptions of each part uh, part A it tells me goes to room one goes to cabinet three in room one and it's a bottom panel and then I've got its size uh, rooms by default are going to be called room one two three four and so on but you, but you can also give them uh, custom names call it a kitchen master bath whatever the case may be uh, if I, I can just scroll down between my different sheets to take a look at look at them and see what they uh, what they look like and uh, that pretty much covers uh, uh, most of the program except for the job costing uh, uh, job costing will be covered in a separate video because it's uh, pretty detailed in itself. If you have any questions, give us a call at 800-283-9577 or local at 574-968-8142. You can also send email inquiries to sales at customcabinetsoftware.com. Thanks for watching this video.